Second speaker, um, we had this gentleman last year. Um, it was an outstanding recollection of what had gone on in the years of CART. I asked him to come back and share some more of his thoughts. We all know him from ABC, ESPN, just about any network that has a couple of letters associated with it. IMS Radio Network, please welcome Mr. Paul Page. Hi, good evening everyone. It, uh, it's kind of neat to follow Robin up here. Um, because so many years he was such a, such a fan of television and, and therefore of course of me. Um, then when he got his television job, I had the joy of being able to go over and say, see? <laughs> you can work your butt off and they just screw everything that you try to do. But uh, I, I have not yet though uh, in seen what I, I hope to see someday, which is the run down the pits and knowing the way tracks generally are, you're being tackled by a couple of security guys right in the middle of the on-camera block. <laughs> I, uh, I was working at WIBC and just happy to be here in Indianapolis and to be close to racing. I wanted to do as much as I could, so I, I went over to Patrick Racing, uh, George Gnotti running it, it was, uh, on Industrial just down the street from where I live, and actually, that Patrick got me started in a way in autosports broadcasting. Uh, I started out as a big naughty gopher and putting Pat's radios together. Wally was driving for Pat. Pat never heard Wally. Wally never heard Pat. But I got to go to all these races for free. It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool stuff. You talked, uh, Robin actually hit on, on much of it. That Dan comes out with a white paper which uh, got distributed when you started looking at it. It's, this thing makes such total sense, and of course it was at a time when USAC was just unwieldy. Too many people, too many ideas, too many things, they couldn't coordinate, and it, it just wasn't working. But suddenly here's this document that tells us all where it can be and what it can be. Dan, Pat, Roger, they put it together, they made it work for us. Uh, I remember spending quite a few times just talking with Tyler Alexander, who was just totally for this idea. And then it took hold. Now, I know a lot of you think about many of the great things that CART has done over the years, but you all seem to miss one of the most critical things they ever did. The very first race, in Phoenix, Arizona in 1979, they came out with this idea of a hard car. Prior to that, we had to go stand in line at registration every race we went to. We'd send gophers, we'd fake signatures and everything to try to avoid that mess. And suddenly we're at a track where we had a device and I'm here, I'm in. Hard card, I think, may be the best invention the card ever actually came up with. <laughs> Um, you, you go through, through the time, the very first race of card, Phoenix, Arizona, of course, won by Gordy Duncock. Uh, NBC did it. Uh, Charlie Jones was the host play-by-play, -play. he's passed away now. Um, I was his uh, analyst and uh, Bob Jenkins was our, our pit reporter for that race. What's significant about that race though is the fact that it actually got on television. And a guy that I don't think gets enough credit, and when we look back on what the history will in fact be, is a guy named Don Olmeyer, who loved auto racing, loved it. He was running NBC Sports World and NBC Sports at the time, and he and Roger got together, the group got together, and Don said, it's a great idea, I'm going to give you airtime for actually three straight years. So that helped put us on the road as well. Uh, and I, I think from time to time we need to think a little bit more about some of those external people who weren't part of our mainstream, but who were so very helpful to us as it all went along. Um, Jim Chapman, who will ever forget Jim when, when, when we were back in the USAC days and maybe somebody would bring around a tray of sandwiches or something and suddenly we had the PPG tent and good food and a gracious man and a man that understood it all and, and in so many ways kept everything going and kept relationships going so well with the Speedway as well. So um, we all constantly re need to remember Jim. And then of course there was Michael Knight who came in as a communications director. 
later armed with a bull arm and a stick, as he was, uh, and a whistle, yes, taking control. Actually, he was the one, you just reminded me, he was the one that one day decided we'd all had enough of the yellow shirts and their whistles up and down Pitt Road. So all of us got whistles. And we hear a whistle, wham, the whole Pitt Road. Nothing but whistles up and down. It was perfect. It was perfect. Um, the growth, of course, was absolutely awesome. Um, we actually had Bernie Ecclestone totally on the ropes. He couldn't figure us out at all. We were putting on these great races, multiple engines, our, everything tactically, the tires, everything. There were a lot of people involved in, in enjoying that. Um, and then, of course, as Robin suggested, you know, along came, uh, came Nigel Mansell, and that just that took us to yet another complete level. But I like, you think about the big guys, and, and I like that, but I like to think about a lot of the other little things that we generated, spin-offs that did so much good. For example, Carl Horton and the safety team, and the whole fact that CART created the whole concept of this level of medical support. Terry Trammell and the guys all put that together, and it, it took us to a new step. It also helped out Mr. Dolan back there, because I remember one year he was uh, working with the uh, Basalt, Colorado Volunteer Fire and Police Department, our Fire and Ambulance Department, and Horton brought an ambulance over and in the middle of, of May, Wally climbed in the ambulance and drove it back to Basalt. And I never asked him if he went back with red lights and siren on all the way. Wally, you wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> But at any rate, the, the other many good people, um, Father Phil. Um, Father Phil once did something I thought was kind of special. You may remember he would always go to different areas of the track, especially on Saturday night, to say mass for, for people. And one of the places he came was our television office. And we had kind of a conference room down at one end that he would, would say mass. And he, he said a perfect 13-minute mass. I mean, he was dead on with a homily in the middle of it. I mean, he was doing the whole thing. Uh, he was a record breaker. And I'm sitting at the desk in the next room one, one evening, and I looked at my watch, oh my goodness, it's like seven after seven, I've missed half the mass. And I go screaming into the room, come to a halt and try to show myself as a reverent person. And Father Phil is now giving out Holy Communion. And he comes to me and I, I haven't made a good act of contrition. I'm not, not prepared here. I don't, don't have forgiveness. And he looks at me, robes on, the host in hand, says, Paul, the radius of my ability to absolve sins is about 12 miles. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Our guy, Robin. Personally, one of the things that I was most proud of, I mean, well, I think we did do, given the limitations that New York kept putting on us, we did some pretty good television. Um, but I think even better than that uh, was the Kmart radio network that we had. And I, in fact, drug out <laughs> one, of the, one of the old shirts. So it was so much fun just putting on those races and that whole theater of the mind. And we were the first ones to do an entire series like that. Uh, for open wheel racing, and uh, I'm really proud of those days. I'd leave you with one perhaps of our greatest achievements. We were all in Brazil and racing, and Scott Goodyear was, uh, was injured, back injury, pretty seriously injured. And we made history at that time too, because I do believe we are the only group anywhere in the world that just FedEx the guy home. <laughs> They wouldn't let him on an airplane or anything, but we threw him on a FedEx plane. A little, little testy with customs when he got there. But we sell a lot of records. It's so great to be with all you guys, and it's uh, great just to spend time and thinking about the old days. And we're all we were a whole lot better then, weren't we? The lives are getting better and better as we go along. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you all. Thank you very much.